Okay, so let's continue our discussion regarding thermodynamics. Entropy. Entropy is a measure of the unavailable energy in a closed thermodynamic system that is also usually considered to be a measure of the system's disorder. That is a property of the system's state and that varies directly with any reversible change in heat in the system and inversely with the temperature of the system. When we say disorder of a system, a lot of us misunderstood the term disorder, especially to us in the medical field. When we say disorder, it is a disease. But let me give you a clear concept about this definition of entropy. Imagine this is a closed system. And this is system A. And then this is system B. And there are four molecules of gas in each system. But the available space for molecules for box A is smaller than box B. Now, listen. Over time, these molecules we have in system A and system B gets different state due to random motion because the gas molecules in each system has different space size. Now, the gas molecules in system A are freely in a small space compared to molecules in system B. In physics, we say that over time, due to less available space in system A, the gas molecules will less get disorderness, while in system B, we say that over time, due to large space it has, the gas molecules will get more disoriented or disordered. Simply, remember that gas molecules and the system, particularly system A, is less free to move, while gas molecules in, in system B are more free to move. Therefore, the system A is less disordered. Kasi paano pa sila gugulo? Eh, malit yung space nila, diba? Well, system B has so much room for the molecules to move freely. Alug-alug sila. Kaya disordered na sila after such time. Right? Now, because system A is less disordered, system A has less entropy. And because system B has more space, it is more disordered. It has less entropy. Thus, from the example, we learn that over time, due to external factors, the state of gas molecules changes, and when the state of gas molecule changes, entropy changes. Okay, now let's discuss the entropy of a system. Okay, now we have two objects, the hot object and the cold object. The hot object here in our slide is represented by the coffee and the cold object here in our slide is represented by the iced water. Now let us call this hot object as system A while the cold object is system B. And of course we have learned a while ago that hot object transfers to cold object until both objects has equal temperature and that state is known as thermal equilibrium we now know that system a is hot so let's denote it as temperature a and the system b is cold and let's denote it also as temperature b or tb Let us also remember that system A is hot or equal to temperature A and system B is cold and hot temperature is always greater than the cold temperature. So if we are going to solve a problem, we always make sure that we select the greater temperature and we will consider it as hot, okay? Now, as a result of the natural process of heat transfer, let us know that our system A will lose heat 
and our system B will gain heat. We have to remember that the heat loss here is equal to the heat gain in system B. Okay? Now let us remember this. Let us consider the entropy of system A as SA and the entropy of system B as SB. Here, system A again losses heat Q and system B gains heat Q. And of course, heat loss is considered as negative while heat gain is considered as positive. And because system A lost heat, it is negative Q. While system B gains heat, it is positive Q. Okay? Okay? So, heat here, heat here in system B is positive. And in this, system A, heat is negative. Okay? Now, we remember that entropy is equal to Q over time, right? Okay. So, system A here is system A is equal to negative Q divided by PA. And system B here is equal to positive Q divided by TB. Okay, this is TB. As we now see the entropy, the entropy of system A decrease and the entropy of system B increases. So, what do we learn from here? If the object loses heat, its entropy decreases. As well as, if the object gained heat, the entropy increases. Okay? Do we get that back? Of course, we have to remember that if it lost heat, then we have negative. And if it gained, we have positive. Okay? Before we proceed to discussing Gibbs energy, let us first talk about who is Gibbs. Okay? Josiah Willard Gibbs is born on February 11, 1839 in New Haven, Connecticut, United States. He died April 28, 1903, also in New Haven. He is a theoretical physicist and chemist who was one of the greatest scientists in the United States during 19th century. His application of thermodynamic theory converted a large part of physical chemistry from an empirical into a deductive science. His application of thermodynamics to physical process led him to develop the science of statistical mechanics. His treatment of it was so general that it was later found to apply as well as to quantum mechanics as to the classical physics from which it had been derived. G, or Gibbs free energy, in thermodynamics is energy-like property or state function of a system in thermodynamic equilibrium. Free energy has the dimensions of energy and its value is determined by the state of the system and not by its history. Free energy is used to determine how systems change and how much work they can produce. Okay, Gibbs free energy, or G, tells us about spontaneity of a process. G or Gibbs free energy tells us whether a process will be spontaneous or not, meaning it will simply happen on its own change in Gibbs free energy is given by this equation which includes change in enthalpy, change in entropy, and temperature. If delta G is negative, the process is spontaneous. If positive, it is non-spontaneous. Okay, remember that if AG 
is negative. We consider that as spontaneous. Okay? So, if we will use this equation to see how a spontaneous process can be either enthalpically or, or entropically favorable or both, but not neither. Okay, for example, if delta H is negative, then that means it's exothermic. Okay? And energetically favorable. And, okay, delta S is positive, which means there is an increase in, which means there is an increase in entropy, which is also favorable. A negative minus a positive will always be negative or spontaneous. Okay. If the opposite is true and both are unfavorable, we have a positive, okay? We have a positive minus a negative, which will always be positive or non-spontaneous, okay? Okay. Now, if only one of the two is favorable, we have to do some math. If delta H, if delta H is positive or endothermic, the energetic unfavorability could be outweighed by the other term if the process is entropically favorable and since t is here this factor will increase with a larger t so entropically favorable processes are more likely to be spontaneous at a higher temperature okay do we get it now conversely if it is energetically unfavorable and entropically favorable spontaneous at a high temperature okay this will be now a very important equation to understand because it is it describes all this all of the spontaneous processes in the universe Okay, I will explain it again, okay? Now, let's go back to the equation. Delta H minus T delta S. Okay. If it is energetic, let's change the color. Okay. Okay. Let's explain that further. Okay, you have to remember that. Okay, let's go back to the equation. Delta G is equal to delta H minus temperature times delta S. Okay? We have to remember that when if delta H is a negative, okay, if delta H is negative, let's change the color so you will not be misguided. If delta H is negative, okay, which means that is exothermic, that is energetically favorable. Okay, this is energetically favorable. And if delta S is positive, which means an increase in an increase in entropy, that is also favorable. Okay? That is entropically favorable. Okay? A negative 
minus okay a negative minus a positive will always be negative or is spontaneous okay remember this if delta g okay okay if it's opposite naman okay this is positive and this is negative that is energetically unfavorable okay and that is also entropically unfavorable okay why because we have a positive minus a negative which will always be positive or that is never is spontaneous okay okay do we get it now let's go naman if only one of the two is favorable okay now let's do some math naman if only one is favorable okay if h is positive or endothermic also energetically unfavorable okay sorry i'm sorry or energy energetically unfavorable that energetic unfavorability could be outweighed by the other term if the process is entropically favorable and since t here is this factor will increase with a larger t so entropically favorable processes okay let's indicate this it is entropically favorable are more likely to be spontaneous at a higher temperature okay, okay. higher temperature it is spontaneous okay this is at a higher temperature it is spontaneous okay conversely if it is energetically favorable but entropically unfavorable okay that means kabalik tara nung kanina we're in okay Okay. We're in it is energetically favorable but entropically unfavorable. The entropic unfavorability will be minimized at lower temperatures. This is a very important equation to understand because it describes all of the spontaneous processes in the universe okay we, here here we have energetically favorable and entropically unfavorable okay we minus that we will have um spontaneous okay we will be spontaneous at a low temperature okay the other kanina is at high temperature ngayon naman at low temperature and now that concludes our study regarding gibbs free energy now let's talk about the second law of thermodynamics the second law of thermodynamics states that the total entropy of an isolated system can never decrease 
okay, an isolated system is the thermal energy per unit temperature that is unavailable for doing useful work. The second law of thermodynamics states that the state of entropy of the entire universe as an isolated system will always increase over time. It also states that the changes in the entropy in the universe can never be negative. Now, what are the main uses of the second law of thermodynamics? The purpose or use of the second law is to determine whether a process is spontaneous or not. Let's consider a few examples. Number one, here are two gases that are mixing together. Number two, air is being leaked from a balloon. And number three, the hot coffee is losing its heat. From number one, the two molecules moved to state two, wherein the two molecules mixed in together. That state happens spontaneously, which means without any external aid. But now think of it. What about the opposite process? Will that happen spontaneously? I mean, can you reverse it from the second state to the first state? Imagine now, without external aid, can you do it? And will it be possible to be reversed? Of course, from our experience, you know that this will not happen, right? So, it is safe to say that this process is not spontaneous. However, according to the rules of energy conservation, or the first law of thermodynamics that we discussed on the previous lesson, even the reverse process is possible. Because in both states, the energy is the same. So what is missing here? What is lacking? There must be one more law which governs the direction of a process. And of course, that law is second law of thermodynamics. Now, probably with all this knowledge, you have a question in your mind, right? Kailangan ba talaga natin ng law para ma-predict yung direction ng mga proseso? Well, for me, I can predict the direction of all these processes just with my intuition or whatever I believed in, okay? Let's define again thermodynamics in an easier manner, okay? I will try to define it as easier as I can, okay? The major statements of the second law of the thermodynamics are the following, okay? The first is the Clausius statement. It says that for any system to operate in such a way that the sole result would be an energy transfer by heat from a cooler to a hotter body. We have an example for that, okay? The hot reservoir can transfer its heat to the cold reservoir. But the cold reservoir can never transfer coldness to the hot reservoir. Okay? Yung malamig na bagay, hindi niya matatransfer yung lamig niya sa isang bagay. Okay? But, dahil yung isang bagay na to, pwede siyang lumamig because of loss of heat. Not because of the transfer of cold. Mm -hmm. There's no such thing. Okay? Next, we have... The second statement, which is Kelvin Planck statement, it is impossible for any system to operate in a thermodynamic cycle and deliver a net amount of energy by work to its surroundings while receiving energy by heat transfer from a single reservoir. Okay? The third statement is entropy statement. It is impossible for any system to operate in a way that entropy is destroyed. So, to make it easy, we make two easier statements that would help us more in understanding this law. First, this is well, um, let's call this as a high to low. For any process and natural flow, will always be from higher energy value to lower energy value. For example, you see the coffee mug at the bottom? Okay? Value for coffee temperature is higher while the cup is a lower, okay? Mainit yung coffee and then yung nilagay mo siya sa baso na malamig, okay? Yung transfer ng heat is not from the mug to the coffee, di ba? It's always the coffee transfer heat to the mug kaya umiinit yung mug. 
Okay? Another is the balloon. Okay? So, try a compressed gas in a balloon. Tapos butasan mo siya. Lagyan mo lang ng malit na butas. A balloon deflates. Not because the outside air enters inside, but because the air inside the balloon exits from the hole. Okay? That's very clear, no? Say, ano, the gas in the balloon has higher pressure than the outside air. Okay? Another simple um, example to make it easier to understand is a classroom setting. The transfer of ideas inside a classroom comes from the professor to the students. Okay? It's never from the students to the professor. Okay? The way the learning process undergone is because the flow of ideas flow from the professor to the students. Okay? That is clear. Isa pang simple example nito is yung imagine an employer um, nagpapasahod siya sa mga pinapasahod niyang employee. The flow of money comes from the employer to the employees na pinapasahod niya. It's never that the flow of money comes from the employees to the employer na nagpapasahod. It's like that. It's as simple as that. Now, let's move to the second simpler statement, which is perfect is impossible. Okay. For every real world process, there will always be process that means you cannot convert all your car's fuel into mechanical energy which can rotate your car's wheel, wheels, okay? Proof is the gases you see on the car's muffler or just merely try bouncing a ball by first throwing it up to the air to see that as the number of bounces increases, the level of bounce decreases. You see as the number of bounces increases, the level of bounce decreases because of the loss of energy which is transferred to the ground. Imagine nyo ba, habang tumatalbog yung bola pataas at pababa dun sa ground, nababawasan yung talbog niya hanggang sa tumigil na siya. Bakit? Kasi natatransfer yung energy niya dun sa ground. And that is because of gravity. Okay? So that is how we can describe the second law of thermodynamics in an easier way. I hope we made it easier to understand because the definitions that we can see online is so complex. So we try to find an easier way to, ex to explain it. Okay? Now for your assignment, if you really watched the lesson for today, carefully and dearly answer this on a short bond paper, handwritten, According to our discussion, why do we have to consider Gibbs function as the driver of biophysical processes? Okay, I will make an assignment tab later on for you to pass your assignments, okay? Thank you for listening and I hope you learned a lot from today's discussion. This is recorded so you can replay it every time you got lost in the lesson okay for you to replay it if you have any questions you have something to rewatch if you have questions just place it on the class teams so everybody can see it and everybody can learn also from your questions okay thank you and good day